Good afternoon, it's Justin here again from uh, Brick Right. This is my uh, Grizzly Adams impression, if uh, if anybody can remember <laughs> Grizzly Adams. Check him out, because it does look like me, or I do look like him. Anyway, Happy New Year. Um, great response last time out from the uh, uh, the video I put up in terms of the difference between uh, site work and private work. So I had a, a really good response on that, and for me, it was really knowledgeable to be able to get your thoughts, your experiences, and... Uh, you know what you prefer in terms of whether you want to be on site or whether you want to do the tour or whether you want to go on to privates or whatever so i'm just going to really read off really quickly and then we're going to move on to uh, my next subject which is um pricing work because a lot of people have kind of spoken to me uh on youtube and through other channels to say that you know if they are on site uh they, they want to get off site the majority of people that i've spoken to whether that's right or wrong for the wrong for the uh, the broader basis of people but if you do want to get off site then how do you price stuff up you know how do you go about it where do you start so that's why people generally want to stay on site because they get a bit fearful of that so we'll get to that so bear with me on that keep watching the video but from the next video um i've just written a few pointers down and we'll get straight into it um people have said you know they struggle to find the right team out on site um it's different in different parts of the uk there was a chap on there that kindly um posted about being in london and he works on high rise and he generally um you know he's on site for over a year or so and he generally works with one subcontractor or director of that company so his position is a lot different to what it would be here down in wales because we haven't got very many high-rise buildings cardiff's a low-rise city and it's our capital so small so that wouldn't apply to us so that was interesting to hear his thoughts on that um people are saying there's no pride in site work anymore it's just all profiles and and slam it up now that's disappointing for me to hear that because i do see some of the boys on youtube on site and they, they seem to me to do a good job but obviously i'm not on site so can't comment um somebody said the crack has gone on site now when i was on site years ago and i still try to do this now in, in work with the boys that i work with currently we do try to have a, a bit of old school banter which you'll uh which you'll see and i think it's key so that's that's a shame that, that that's gone that is serious poor many people said um high traveling times um build up new levels on private i don't know what that means very um very similar in australia that the, the chap saying that in australia it's a little twist to it with the subbies but it's, it's pretty much the same out there um some guy said site work is the dark side <laughs> so that's a good way to put it i suppose um people said that they felt in a little bit more control working on private so uh, in control of their own uh destiny not with the dark side destiny is, is a star wars theme here isn't it <laughs> anyway um people getting ripped off on site well i've been there i think we've all been there haven't we high standard stick to privates i suppose you can have a bit more time to do your own private works um private you need a high turnover of work yeah i get that and there's a lot of quoting and a lot of material sourcing i get that so that's just a few so it's really good and as somebody that stood out going into the banter side of it did say you get biscuits on site on their uh, private so you don't nobody comes up with biscuits and tea on site so there's that about it as well in there so um yeah just i mean if you haven't seen it go back have a little look at it because it is i thought it was a good subject and people reply with some good things on there so we'll get straight into the next one which is pricing for work so key before you even start what you are going to do with your business uh with your pricing you've got to do your business costs right so things like if you're running a business like my business now now, now these prices are not based on my business because i'm not going to divulge them because that's personal to me but just as an average just as a kind of indicator to you right and a lot of people this may not apply to all of them it may apply to some of them it may apply to, apply to all of you so advertising some people do some people don't so i've put two thousand pound in for advertising as a yearly cost transport i.e your van your fuel your insurance your upkeep you may lease a van you may be buying a van on loan so i've put three thousand five in for that and then your insurances like your employers liability your employers insurance and your public liability insurance and any income protection you um you've got i mean i was unfortunate last year to be ill for four months i had to have an operation unexpectedly and i was off work for four months and i didn't have any income protection never thought i needed it and um i wish i did so i've now got income protection 
um, accountant fees, a thousand pound for income protection and the employer's uh, liability. Accountants fees. Now, you know, I haven't got time to go doing accountants fees and stuff like that and accounting and stuff. And I just haven't got time to do it. So, I just give all that red tape stuff. I don't understand none of that. I give it all to the accountant. Um, they do that for me. Brilliant. Known them for years. So you're looking at around about seven hundred quid, six seven hundred quid for that. Yearly bank charges three hundred and fifty quid. Mobile phone bills, you're looking at uh, 500 quid. And then company uniform, which we've got an upkeep of company uniform. Now, I've spent more than this, but, you know, you're looking at like £400 for that. So you've got a yearly outlay of £8,450 per year, even before you even start pricing what we're going to price. So £8,450 a year is a lot of money, isn't it? You know, to um, and you've got to add that to your costs of where you're going to price up. So how do you do that? So it's basically £162.50 a week. And I'm sat in a van here, and it haven't been started for two weeks, and it's a van vlog, which is why I sit in the van. But I'm freezing. It's absolutely better out here. So it's £162 a week um, for your outlay, which is £32.50 a day in your daily costs, which has got to be added to your price. So if we were starting a price, we're going to do a brick wall. I'm a bricklayer. Let's, let's stay with bricklay. We do other stuff other than bricklay. But let's stay on bricklaying now. So if you're going to do a private job and you're bricklaying a double skin wall, 6 metres by 1.2 metres in stretcher bond, right? So what do you do there? Now you start, well, you've got to work your bricks out. So you go 6 metres times, and I've done it, 1 metre, 350. And I know I said 1.2 but if you think about it, and you've got to think about this a lot when you're pricing up for clients, you know, out, out away from sight, right? Because when you say six metres times 1.2, that's the distance from the floor up 1.2. But you've got to put two courses of bricks minimum below ground, haven't you? To, so it's below ground to get your bond and, you know, so the wall's built correctly. So that's where the six metres times one metre 350 comes in. So you've got to think about this because you don't want to not price for it. And then, you know, you then have got to pay for two courses below ground you haven't priced for. So, 8.1 square metres is the equation we get to for that. So, there is 120 bricks in a double thickness stretcher bond wall per square metre. So, 8.1 times 120 bricks per square metre is 972 bricks. Now, depending on what brick you're going to use, we all we won't go into the bricks, but some of them come chip, some of them come wet some of them come you know might have a bit of uh, algae on them or a bit of moss on them so i've put a five percent waste in there cutting waste in that so you're looking at about a thousand bricks 1020 bricks right so if you base your bricks on the fact that they're going to cost a, an average cost of a brick 60p so you're looking at 612 pounds for your bricks right so, so far, in pounds, we're £612 for our bricks. And I always work the brickwork out first. You might be thinking, why hasn't he worked the foundations and the excavation and the concrete out first? You work from the ground up. Because I want to know how many bricks is in the wall. Because as a bricklayer, the first thing I'm thinking is how many bricks i got to lay. So that's why I do it like that. So back to it then. So I've got two days' labour to lay the 1,000 bricks. Now, you boys on site might be thinking, oh, you know, I whack them in in the, in the day on site, easy. You haven't got a silo, you haven't got your cement, you haven't got your, you know, you've got a little bell mixer to use, you've got to bring everything off the back of a van or you get it delivered or you've got to walk it to where you're working. There's lots of things on, on private work that are going to slow you down compared to um, blasting and, and throwing things up on, on site. So, you you know, it's going to take you two days by the time you set it up, put it in, get it stacked out, clean everything up, put your brick or edge on or whatever you're capping it off with. It, it will. So don't undercut yourself. So i got two days labour. I don't know why you charge. Some might, might charge 200 quid a day. Some might tra charge 100 quid a day. Some might charge 50 quid for your labourer. Some might charge 80 quid. So I've put in 150 quid for a bricky, which is... If you're a consumer, that's a good price in it, to be honest with you. So I haven't gone stupid. So 130 quid a day for a brickie, 75 pound a day for the labourer. So that's 205 pound per day. Two days, I said 410 quid. So so far we got 612 for the bricks, 410 pound to lay them. And then 
you can go as you all know you can work out your mortar and your cement if you really want to in the kilograms find out how many kilograms of mortar it's going to be transfer it into 10 same with cement we won't do that because this is just a small example so you got I, i'm shivering here you got six cement roughly 27 quid 10 of sand 10 of building sand 42 quid 69 pounds right and then we move on to our foundation so i got excited with the bricks to know how many bricks was in it because that's just the way i always am rightly or wrongly so now your excavation and your foundations so with your foundations we know it's six meters long and then you've got i do 450 millimeters wide because you want a nice toe on your foundation don't you you know, you don't want to be doing it 225 wide and having a no toe and no overlap on your foundation. Let's do it properly. So 450 millimetres wide. And then I've got the excavation to be 350 millimetres deep. Now you're thinking 350 mil of concrete in there, that's thick, but it's not, is it? Because you've got, a, you've got your, I've worked it out for 200 mil of concrete and then your 150 mil of two courses of bricks below ground. But you've still got to dig it out, haven't you? So you need to be careful when you're working stuff out on privates. You get stuck and caught like that. So if it's a long wall or it's a big area and you've missed out your two courses of bricks below ground and you've missed out this point now of digging out for your two courses of bricks below ground, you're out of pocket before you've left ground, aren't you? So this is what this is all about. So bear with me. We'll get there. Um, and there's some points at the end, so stay with me. So you've got your 350 mil deep. So that equals an equation of 0.945 so if you times that by two that'll roughly give you the amount of soil you need to dig it out so basically work your volume out it's the same as working concrete out length times breadth times width and all the rest of that stuff right so if you work your concrete out meters cubed that's how much you'll get to dig out for your foundation so you're looking at about two ton so now you need a skip so a midi skip in this area you're looking around 180 quid we'll add that to the price 180 quid so then i've put half a day's labor in for the excavation that's 102 pounds and 50 pence so now we're on to the concrete so again we know that it's six meters long we know it's 450 millimeters wide and we know it's 200 millimeters deep which gives you an equation of 0.54 meters cubed right so it's about a half a meter of of concrete if you were to order it on like a mixer or a, or a mixer wagon to deliver to site but it's a small job so but they do deliver it mix it who i use they do deliver that so if i was on site i might just go for that just to get it done or it's, it's small so you could mix up your sand and cement and your chippings to make your concrete so i got 70 quid for that doing it on site and then i got half a day's labor to lay it in to get that done so now you've got your bricks bought You've got your, your bricks laid, you've got your sand and cement bought, you've got all that sorted, you've got your excavation dug, um, you've got your concrete in, you've got your labour in. So now we've got a page total there of £1,545.02. Okay. Right. So now, what we do now is we take that over to the next page, £1,545.02. Now then, what you've got to add to that is your business costs like we said earlier so 32 pound 50 a day times three days at a cost of 97 pound 50 now your grand total is up at 1642 pound and 52p and phrases just pulled up outside so that's where we are with that so now you've got the things on site that may increase the costs for this so have you looked at your access you know you've got to be able to look at your access and we've been through this in a previous video um the material choice so you know what bricks do they want do they want engineering bricks do they want expensive um solid bricks do they want um reclaimed bricks i mean what brick do they want what brick rating do they want you know are you what f rating you're using outside is it something outside they need to be frost proof so you need to check that consider how the how you would finish then back around the walls you've dug the wall out all that's done you've built the wall up you go to your um to your client and you say i am mrs jones 1642 pounds and 52 pence please are you happy can i have my money please that's great thank you very much mrs jones says well hang on a minute oh you, you you took slabs up you took the garden up you've affected next door's garden what are you going to do to put the wall back well all of a sudden now you're in the stump now aren't you you're uh 
you've undercut yourself now, aren't you? So either that customer is decent and they say, well, look, okay, you know, it, it hasn't, you know, you haven't priced up for it or whatever. Or they say, well, look, you know, you gave me the price, crack on with it. Do you, do you ruin your name? You know, do you walk away with your tail between your legs? Are they going to pay you? I mean, you know, you open a can of worms just, you've got to be careful. Um, services on site, are they going to give you water and electricity? Water, sometimes, most of the time, it's outside tap. If it's an inside tap, it's a nightmare because you, you've got hoses popping off inside. We generally fit an outside tap suddenly before we get there, which costs again, so consider that. Electricity, if they're in work, do they want to leave you the key? If you've got to get a generator, if you've got to hire a generator, is that going to cost? Does that go on top of the cost? And then, again, then you know, the impact of the neighbour side next door. You've dug, dug it up. You've dug all um, Barry's vegetable plot up next door. He got no carrots. He got nothing out for his cooked dinner on a summer Sunday. <laughs> You've ruined his vegetable plot, you have, because you um, you haven't thought about this now. You haven't spoken to Barry. He's not happy. So you've got that to put back now as well, haven't you? So it's getting out of control now, isn't it? Uh, is there any trees? I mean, what's in the ground? Have you agreed a, a contingency with any trees, roots, um, concrete, and, you know, any anything that's, that's within your area that's going to stop you digging? I put in half a day's labour to dig. What if you get a big boulder underground and it takes you a day's labour instead of half a day or a day and a half? Got to put a contingency in. We've been through the water. And then be clear to write up your quote in writing and for any unseen things like I'm talking about now. So that £1,642.50, we think we've covered it all. But when you look at the other bits and pieces, have you covered it all? So I think this is where people get kind of confused. This is where people kind of get lost and, and they get a little bit daunted about going from privates to site work. And Fraser hasn't seen me. I could be stealing this van now. We've got all his tools in the back. You haven't seen me. So, yeah, you know, you could you get yourself a stuck. And this, this is where people get stuck. And this is where people think, well, I'm not going to do it. But, you know, if you don't do, you'll never know, will you? You know, so you've got to learn these things along the way. And then while I'm speaking to you now, is there anything that you boys can think that I've missed out? Because there's, there's a massive thing there that I've missed out. And I was guilty of missing this missing this out for years and years and years and years up until you know well i'm still guilty of missing it out now if i'm honest and it's the p word isn't it if you guessed it yet yeah. it's profit you know your business has to make a profit it's not just about paying you and little jimmy a laborer it's not just about keeping mr and mrs jones happy with the access and the wall and building back around the wall and getting your bricks below ground and all that sort of stuff it's about making your business a profit so that you can put that into your kitty, put it into your business account. And your business, like any business, like Tesco's, you know, if you're working for BMWs or anybody, these businesses are there to make money. And you've got to be able to make money, big or small. So, you know, if you put a 10% a profit then on top of that £1,642.52, a 10% profit would then takes you up to 1,806 quid. So for pricing purposes, we'd call it 1,800 quid. Yeah, so it's jumped up a bit now, isn't it? Um, is there anything else you think I've missed out? Because there is. Again, there, there is something I've missed out. It's the V word. It's the V-A-T word, the old uh, thank you very much, Maggie Thatcher. It's, uh, yeah, and the, the threshold for the VAT in the UK is £85,000 in 12 months. So if you earn over that, you've got to pay VAT. So, you know, if you think about it, if you do a couple of big jobs through the year, um, being a bricklayer, I find this totally unfair because bricklaying costs, if you're using, say you're on site and you, 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 know, you do a landscaping job and there's porcelain on there, it's, it costs a horrendous amount of money. So the material bills on these jobs can cost thousands and thousands of pounds, or potentially they could. So your materials go in with your earnings, then you've got to pay your van and everything else. So, you know, you could, as a mid mid sized business, get up and over that 85 grand quite quickly, couldn't you? Whereas, you know, a plumber or a painter or a sparky, their outlay is a lot less than ours. So they don't have to pay charge VAT as, as quick as what we might have to do. So... That's another subject for another day. Don't start me on it because it drives me cuckoo. But, oh, excuse me. So, um, yeah, think about the VAT threshold if you're going to start a business. Um, 
you know, so I think it kind of brings us to a conclusion of what we're talking about. So it was just a follow on from what everybody was kind of saying on the uh, on, on the last video. So I hope this video's um, helped you. If there's anything you need from me to um, to help you, great. And in return, maybe you could pay for a, a haircut for me and uh, that would be appreciated. So yeah, I hope it's helped you. If there's anything you think I've forgotten again, and I'm learning off this all the time, and I keep saying, harping on about it, this is what these videos partly are, are all about, is to help me, to help you. Um, and we can all help each other, and, that, and that's what it's about. So I hope I've given you a little bit of an insight into it. You know, it's a different formula for pricing up your patios, and you've got to be very, very careful Um you know, you can you can get stung on these jobs by not knowing. You might be a bricky. You might think to yourself, look, you know, I know how to price up. I know how many bricks are in a square metre. I know how to do my Flemish bonds. I'm confident. I've been doing it on site for donkey's years. I know about all this. I can whack my profiles up. I can do, do this. I can do that. But, you know, you can get stung out on privates because you've got to be able to dig the job out and prep the job first before you put it back. So it's, it's about doing that and it's about doing it right because i suppose you know if you do if you price a job at wrong and you're my size business then you know you do it so wrong and you either walk away with your tail between your legs and look like a right tit and damage your reputation or you stay and i've known this before i've known boys do this before i worked for a company before that, that did exactly this you know they they went big quite quickly or three or four vans say big medium size went went bigger then um didn't really understand it what he was doing um and then the bubble burst it went pop and so did he you know he went down the swanee and uh, felt really sorry for the chap and lovely guy and um just did it in a little bit of the wrong way so you've got to be careful just start if you're going to start it start it slow you know don't outlay too much on tools Maybe do a little bit of private work and dance between the two on doing your site work. And then if you like the private work, maybe, you know, start putting more and more private work in it. But you're not going to get work all the time on private as a bricklayer either. You've got to be able to broaden your skill set. You, you, I mean, in my experience, you know, you go around, you build an extension. Somebody wants you to do it all. You know, I started off calling myself a bricklaying specialist. I thought I could leave privates and I thought I could go out onto site, uh, out onto private, sorry, leave site, go out onto private. And I thought I'd just be uh, working for builders, doing substructures and stuff like superstructures and stuff like that, a uh, bit of groundwork here and there. Um, it didn't happen. You know, we did some walls and we did, um, we applied our trade where we could and then we ran out of work um, and it was a nightmare. But, you know, we got through it. We learned. We learned the hard way. We learned quickly. And what I've done now is I've had to change my direction a bit. I'm a bricklayer. Bricklayer is what I do. Brick, bricklaying is what my passion is. Bricklaying is what I love. So that's that's what I do. That's what I am. But I've had to change to incorporate it into my business to be able to earn money, to be able to earn a profit and be able to um, be where I am today and just be here, you know, be trading in, in these circumstances, which is difficult. So I could talk all day. No one's talking back. So, you know, I could talk all day on it. So we leave it there. Anything you need, any comments like you did before, please leave them uh, below. Be interested to think what you boys think, your experiences on, on this. And um, I'll see you soon. We're back in sight now. On, it's Sunday today. So we're back in sight on Monday down in Cardiff onto the, um, onto the landscaping job. So check out one of the videos and... Uh, Please hit that button down in the corner down there, which doesn't do anything because I don't know what I don't know how to do it, but it means subscribe. <laughs> so if you'd like to subscribe, leave some comments and like, and I'll see you soon. See you uh, see you through next week. Take care. All the best. Stay safe.